Not anymore. Now it's winked at by the church. Right. Our nation is, my goodness, it has about gotten to the place to where it was before the flood when the Bible says that men's hearts were on evil continually. All right. Amen. Yes, sir. Seeing sales in America. Amen. Whether it be rated R movies. Yeah. And even some of the movies that ain't rated R. That's right. You ought to pay more attention to what you watch. Amen. You ought to pay more attention to what kind of video games your kids play. That's it. Oh boy. I got a that's it and didn't get another amen. <laughs> Hope somebody out there is amen. Yeah. Yeah. You better you ought to pay more attention to the things that you let your babies have. Amen? Yes, sir. The video games where they're killing each other. Right. Cutting each other's heads off and amen. shedding blood. Right. And finally, whenever that devil gets a hold of them and that ain't enough, then they'll take to the streets. Amen. Amen. Right. And then we'll sit somewhere, I don't know what in the world happened to my kid. I tried my best to raise them right while they're sitting in their bedroom with their earphones on listening to some hard rock alternative junk. I tried my best to raise them right while they're sitting there in front of the big 72-inch television killing somebody and shooting somebody. Right. You didn't do your best. Amen. Come on. You might have tried in some areas, but we have dropped the ball in a lot of areas. Amen. Right. Amen. We've allowed the devil to teach our children. That's right. And we have raised a generation they don't even know what sin is. Yes, sir. They don't hear the preacher preach about it. That's right. He came. He's too busy living in sin himself. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yeah. He's too busy carrying on his affairs himself. Right. Oh my goodness. He's too busy. He's afraid he offends somebody. Yeah. You know what I learned a long time ago? It don't matter how much I try, I'm going to offend somebody. Yeah. All right. Amen. It's true. I've offended some people over stupid junk. Had one woman get mad at me because I didn't shake her hand during church. And let me explain to you the situation. She came in late. She left early. I was singing and preaching the whole time. Apparently, I was supposed to leave the platform, go back there and say, bless your heart. It sure is good to see you today. Yeah. Amen. In order to get to church early. Come on. You'll stick around after we say dismissed. Amen. Yeah. Then I might get around shaking your hand. Yeah. Come on. I ain't one of those people who like going around fellowshipping when it's time to worship. Amen. I'm sorry. I ain't never been that way. Yeah. I've had a few pastors like that, and one pastor anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I ain't crazy about that. Alright. Has somebody get mad at me because I was one time I was putting the husband and the wife's name on the envelope. Mm -hmm. And when I read in the addresses to send out the newsletters, I left her name off and just had the husband's name on the envelope. Uh -huh. So see, people get mad over stupid junk. Right. I might as well preach the truth. And if that makes you mad, glory to God, I'm, I'm justified in that. Amen. Right. We've been learning how that sin, when it is left alone, it will begin to eat you alive. Amen. Right. And last week, we talked about Belshazzar. Mm -hmm. And we talked about how that God said, even though you've seen the result of sin in your father's life, yeah. even though you've seen the result in the life of sin in the life of your father, you still... Though you knew all of this, you still chose to go get the vessels from the house of God, drink out of them the wine of your in your drunken stupor and with your concubines and your wives. And I tell you what they were having, but it's kind of a word I don't like to use. It wasn't just a party; it's a sex party. Let me put it like that. And they were drinking out of the vessels that came from God's house. And say, well, that don't matter. Oh, yes, it does. When God pronounced judgment on him and whenever he reaped what he sowed, God made sure he mentioned at least twice that you took in vessels out of my house. Yeah. Amen. Come on. The things that had been set aside for God, mm. he took those things and used them for his own pleasure. Amen. And we know what happened to him. Yeah. The Bible says that a hand appeared and began to write. The fingers of a man's hand right. began to write on the wall. Mm -hmm. Weighed in the balance and found one. And your kingdom is divided. It cannot stand. And before daybreak, Belshazzar was dead in a doornail. Why? Sin. Amen? Right. Sin. That's why he was dead. Because sin, when it is finished, it brings, brings forth death. First Peter 4 and 17 says, For the time has come that judgment must begin on the streets. And always this. Judgment must begin first where? 
the house of God. Amen? Amen. God's going to teach His people. That's right. He's trying to teach us that sin is still deadly. Mm -hmm. He's trying to teach us that sin still kills. Right. He's trying to teach us that confessing is not just for those that you think are lost as a ball in high weeds and don't know Jesus, mm -hmm. but it's for you whenever you sin. The Bible says if you confess your sins, right. He's faithful and just to forgive your sins. Come on. We talked about what sin does to a nation. Right. In America, now we have denominations. Listen, they're in the denomination in America right now that could convince me to join. Mm. Amen? All right. None of them. And I know that's going to curl the feathers of some of you people out there that are part of denominations, but mm. before long, someone posted on Facebook this week, his brother, it was a pastor down in, I can't remember where he's from, Brother Scott. Uh, pastor Scott Corbin, I think. <clears throat> anyway, somebody there posted about not going to Office Depot any longer because of the their support for the homosexual. Mm. Well, folks, it's going to get to where you can't go to no denominational church. You're going to have to find you a storefront independent, amen, right. Bible-believing, full gospel, Pentecostal church in order to be able to hear the truth because all the rest of them is going to compromise. Mark that down in your, mm. on your notebook. Mm -hmm. All the rest of them is going to compromise. Mm. You, you have to compromise to be part of that big organization and have the business run like it's supposed to run. Because if you don't compromise, it won't run right. Mm, amen. And we're seeing this in America today. We talk about America being full of sin. The church has followed suit. That's right. The Presbyterian Church of the United States has officially approved. This just happened in May. Mm. They went into their bylaws and they rewrote them. Mm. They have officially approved the ordination of active homosexuals to its clergy. The denomination which has 2.8 million members mm. did away with the policy that had required candidates. Listen to what they did away with. Mm. They did away with this part of their bylaws that said that in order to be a minister, you had to be engaged in the fidelity within the covenant of marriage, meaning that it, between a man and a woman. Mm -hmm. yeah. The fidelity of marriage, or if you were single, you had to be you know, abstin had to be practicing abstinence or chastity or whatever. Meaning that you couldn't just be sleeping around. So now they've done away with that. So now it can be Adam and Steve and they can get married. They can be preachers in their church. Amen. Mm -hmm. The preacher, your pastor, he can still hold a license with them even though he's shacking up with the secretary and not even married. Because now they've done away with the part that says in order to be a minister in our denomination, you have to either be single, you know, living a life of not perverted life, but single and not sleeping around. Or you have to be married. If you're married, it has to be a man and it has to be a woman. Well, they did away with that. That's the Presbyterian church. You know what I said when I found that out? If I was in a Presbyterian church, I'd get out. I'd get out. Amen. Amen. Right. Because I'm telling you, like Brother Hinton used to say, he, he used to say this all the time, God will allow for a little while. Amen. He'll let you go on for a little while and he'll go. Right. He'll withdraw his spirit. Amen. I've heard him say that time and time and time again. Right. That's exactly what's happening to the mainstream denominations mm -hmm. in America. The Episcopal Church, 2.1 million members will ordain a homosexual. The Evangelical Lutheran Church in America has 4.6 million members. They will ordain a homosexual. The United Church of Christ in America that has 1.1 million members. They voted to permit homosexual ordination. Just recently in Minnesota during the United Methodist Ministers Convention, 40 Methodist members signed a paper stating that they will marry homosexuals. Yeah. Methodists. Amen. And you know what the Methodist headquarters had to say about it? They said, well, that goes against our rules. And if they do that, they might lose their license. They might. Mm -hmm. I got news for you. The minute they signed that paper saying they would marry homosexuals, mm -hmm. I'd have took their license right then. All right. Whether they did it or not. Listen, you think that you're going to come around me telling me that you believe it's okay for a man and a man to get married and say, hey, Brother Billy, can I preach? No! Can I put this in language you can understand? No, you can't preach. Yeah, you can come in here and you can sit on the pew, 
but you ain't going to lead my song service. You ain't going to play in my band. You ain't going to testify on my pulpit. You ain't going to come here and, and go around saying it's okay for a man and a man to be together and a woman and a woman to be together and all that's okay. Can I preach at your church? No, you cannot. Amen. Amen. That's the truth. No, you can't. Amen. We're talking about denominations. Right. Big ones. Mm -hmm. right. The president of the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, mm -hmm. after being presented with a petition by 10,000 homosexuals asking the Southern Baptists to, to uh, apologize to them for their stand on homosexuality, instead of this man standing there and saying the homosexual population needs to repent, you know what he said? He said the Southern Baptist denomination needs to repent for their attitude toward homosexuals. Mm. Well, I'd be looking for being another president. All right. Amen. True. Talking about denominations. Talking about the church. Mm. Amen. Talking about a nation that has turned her back on God. Right. And you know what the end result of that is. It's death. Amen. Amen. Listen, what we've seen on, on when they hit the tires and whenever they hit the Pentagon, whenever they yeah. we ain't seen nothing yet. Amen. Say, Brother Billy, you saying that's God's judgment. I told you last week, God don't have to judge it. That's right. All he has to do is allow his word to take course. Be not deceived. God is not mocked whatsoever man soweth. That shall he also reap. Amen. He don't have to pour out judgment. All he has to do is just let you plant and watch it grow. Amen? Amen. Because that which you put in the ground, sooner or later, you will reap the crop thereof. Amen? Sooner or later, you've got to eat from the garden that you planted. Mm -hmm. there you go. And if you are planting sin and wickedness and destruction and, and abortion and condoning homosexuality, sooner or later, you're fixing to eat some bitter fruit. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you stand and wave your finger in the face of God and say, why did you allow this to happen? Yeah. You planted the seed. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You planted the seed. God did not do it. You did. Amen. Mm -hmm. We can't continue on the same road we're going on That's right. and not suffer the consequences thereof. Come on. You want to know what selling out to the devil does to a country? Look at Haiti. Right. Amen. Amen. In August of 1791, the Haitian Revolution began in which the spirit of a Zilladanior, voodoo witch, mm -hmm. possessed a priestess and received a black pig as an offering, and those that were in attendance to the meeting pledged their allegiance to voodoo and the devil mm -hmm. if they could get out from underneath the thumb of those that had them oppressed. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to see, go and look up on the computer some of the things that go on in Haiti and you'll find out. My wife went over there years and years ago. It ain't no better today than it was then. Sewer running right down the middle of the street. Big ditch. Mm. You got to take a dump. I guess you just go out there and hang yourself over it or something. Mm. No water. No places to live. Come on. Oh yeah. Give yourself to the devil and that's exactly what he'll do to you. Amen. That's exactly what he'll do to you. He'll leave you broken and torn down. The church is so stupid she don't even know it. Oh, sin don't hurt me. That's what Samson thought. Mm -hmm. Right. Amen. Yeah. Sin ain't gonna it won't have the same result for me as it did with daddy. Oh, yes, it will. Yeah. Ask Belshazzar. Amen. Amen. I'm sure somewhere along the lines, Belshazzar thought, well, that old man just didn't know how to handle it. Right. Mm -hmm. 